We have a special guest today in Nafisa Collier. She's here on the program to discuss the WNBA's league marketing agreements. What are they and how have they grown and changed? The Locked On Women's Basketball Podcast starts right now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Hello and welcome. You are Locked On Women's Basketball. I'm Jackie Powell. I'm one of your hosts this fall and winter. I cover the New York Liberty here at The Next. I help with our social media strategy and I've covered women's basketball nationally at many other places. Um, We wanted to thank you for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On Women's Basketball is brought to you by everyone at The Next, a place where we cover women's basketball all the time. And we tell the stories that need to be told every single day. Also, if you subscribe to us, you can get 50% off our partner site, The Equalizer, which covers women's soccer every day. And also, our podcast is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. That includes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. So we have a really special guest on today. We actually have two special guests, if you count Mila. Um, So we've got Nafisa Collier and her daughter Mila here with us. And what we're going to be talking about is the WNBA's relatively new initiative, and that is the League Player Marketing Agreements. So Nafisa and Mila, thank you so much for coming on to the show. I think where I want to start is... You know, tell the listeners and and the fans what exactly are uh, player marketing agreements or PMAs for short. Yeah, well, thanks of all first. Thanks for having us. Um, And player marketing agreements basically are a way to keep players here in the off season. So um, there's multiple layers to it as well. So a lot of it is like um, social media. So we're posting on social media. We're trying to grow the brand, um, grow our brand while help growing the league. And then we go to fun events like we get to go to NBA All Star and like the Final Four in the WNBA draft and things where uh, we want our faces at and things that are like high publicity so that we can continue to grow. Like I said, both the WNBA and our own personal brand. So I've had a lot of fun with it this past year, and we just started again this year. So I'm excited to see what year two brings. Absolutely. Um, and so I, I guess what I want to know from you personally is what made you say that you wanted to give this a shot in 2021? I mean, off air, I sort of said that you were one of the guinea pigs. I mean, this program is still so new. It started in 2021. What made you sort of want to be like, you know what, I'm going to be one of the inaugural people, although it's sort of still developing? I thought it was just a really great opportunity. Um, when I first heard about it, I wasn't, I didn't know that I was pregnant yet. And um, that was a, one of the reasons that I stayed all, from going overseas after I found out, obviously I couldn't play, <laughs> but I thought it was a really great opportunity because growing my brand is something that I've been wanting to do for a while now. Um, it's the way that you get endorsements and saying on social media is like the new thing. You have to do that now. And so it's something that I've been really wanting to do. Um, and obviously I want to help the league grow. It's something that I'm in and we need to do that in order to further our game. Um, so I thought it was just really cool. And if you can stay home, you know, all the better, you know, I would much rather be home with my family. So. For sure. For sure. And so you talk about your brand, I guess, in, in your experience being on the, the PMA, how do you think you would describe your brand? How do you think it's grown? in these past, it hasn't been two years yet, but I guess we'll say two off seasons. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's grown. I think I'm on it a lot more. You know, I'm not naturally someone that like takes pictures of what I'm doing. So Mm -hmm. 
t- doing this, it's like forced me to do that, which is actually a really great thing. I love to see the memories. I just in the moment don't think to do that. So, you know, it's like a two part win in that way. But I think my brand has grown, first of all, through motherhood, obviously, like she's a huge part of my brand and my identity now. So I post about her a lot. Um, she's a huge part of my brand. And then um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's just like who you are as a person. So I love to read. So I'm involved in like um, through social media. I met Sarah Pekinen and Gur Hendricks. She the authors of like book a couple of books that I really love uh, and things like that. So I think it's just like I said, your identity. And then you try to kind of. Um, capitalize on that as much as you can while still being super genuine. Oh, I love that. Especially about the authors. I mean, since I'm in the the New York area, Jocelyn Willoughby did a book club for a couple of years and it was really cool to see her get onto these Instagram lives where she'd have the authors with her and she loved the book so much. So I love that that is, that is like a WNBA nerdy thing that multiple players (laughs) are doing and are into. And as a nerdy person, I love it too. Um, yeah. So I, I guess what I, what I want to know is, is also um, what's one experience that you've had that maybe has stuck with you for a while in, in participating in the, the PMA, the PMA youth um so one thing that was really cool we did last year we haven't had a lot of activation this year it just started Mm -hmm. um but last year we got to go to new york fashion week which i'd never been to and Mm. we got to be like um front row at dirdo and we were backstage they did like our makeup and they dressed us and that was really fun it's something like i've never done anything like that before so it was a totally new experience so i thought that was awesome um and then going to the final four it was in minnesota which is obviously my home market and it's the first Final Four that I've been to since I played. So that was really, really fun. I like both of those things a lot. Well, I, it's funny to hear Mila um, open up when you mention fashion. Is she becoming a little fashionista? Does she like clothes? I know she's still very young. but <laughs> I like dressing her in clothes. And we have a bow to match literally every outfit. So <laughs> she's always 100% more um, better dressed than I am. Okay. So maybe that's, that's why she, she opened up when we talked yeah. about fashion week. It, it's interesting because I know there have been these like grassroots social media campaigns where people are like, okay, we need to get WNBA players to, um, to the Met Gala. Like that, that, that would be incredible. WNBA players are so fashionable. So it's, it, it's, it's pretty awesome to sort of see that building online and then for it to sort of be realized in New York fashion week. And then there's obviously potential like the Met Gala could happen. And that would be amazing. (laughs) I want to sign myself (laughs) up for that. Uh, I think the league does do a good job of like fashion is a huge part of our league. We have league fits every game day and things like that. So they, they do take into account like the things that we enjoy doing And then, like I said, they try to capitalize things that are genuine to us. So we have so many people who are into fashion in our league. And so what better way than to go to Fashion Week to have us, you know, at an event like that. So I think I thought that was really cool. So so fashion, books and authors. What is another interest of yours that you think has sort of been and motherhood? What is another interest that has been, I guess, galvanized and and shown during this experience? Um, I don't know if there's like a new interest, but Mm -hmm. I love um, like going to the events of basketball because especially in the off season, you just miss it so much. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you get your fill during the summer and it's like, so um, what's the word? Like it's diluted in the off season, you know, you have so much of it. And then it's just like this huge drop off where you're not doing anything in the off season, like basketball related. So being able to go to those events is so fun and it kind of fills your cup back up for basketball things. And it makes you get that itch even more because you're watching other people play. Um, So I don't think it's like obviously a new hobby or anything like that that's realized, but it just allows me to watch basketball more and be around it more, which is always fun. Wonderful. Well, so now we're going to take a quick break and um, going to tell you all about Express VPN. And so just to tell you all something about me, I spent six months in London 
six years ago. And so I would have loved a way that I could have kept up with shows that hadn't premiered in the UK. But everyone back home was talking about them. I mean, today, I can't imagine what I would have done if I couldn't watch the White Lotus finale when it became available. White Lotus didn't exist then, of course, but anyway, uh, ExpressVPN lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from 100 different countries. So just imagine all the Netflix libraries you can go through, but it's not just Netflix. It also works with Hulu, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, and more. ExpressVPN works on smartphones, media consoles, smart TVs, and more. If you want to get access to hundreds of new shows, go to express.com slash locked on right now, and you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN free. That is expressvpn.com slash locked on, expressvpn.com slash locked on to learn more. Before we get back to our program with Nafisa Collier and Mila, of course, I just want to quickly remind all of you, the listeners, all about the risks of driving drunk or under the influence. The results can be tragic, traumatic, and often deadly. So just a reminder to get a ride or drive sober. Now, back to the program. Okay. So as we mentioned earlier, or actually, before we get back to the program, we wanted to thank you for listening to Locked On Women's Basketball as your first listen. And we want to remind you about what your second listen should be, which is Locked On Sports Today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today on this app, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, now back to the show. So something that I'm super curious about when it comes to PMAs is sort of how it's evolved from year one to year two. And since you sort of have been on the inside of this since the inception, what are some of the main changes you've noticed? Uh, Yeah, I think it's already changed so much. And like you said, we're already in year two. First of all, last year there were three of us. This year there's 10. So a huge jump in numbers that, of participants, which is awesome. And then um, I think last year, really, we were just kind of getting our feet under us. No one knew what we were doing or what to get, what to get out of this, like on either side. And so um, we were kind of just like bouncing ideas off each other. Like, would you be up to doing this? And we're like, sure. No, we don't want to do that or things like that. Um, this year it feels a lot more structured and organized. Um, So I'm super excited to see like what they have planned out and how it's going to grow even more. So what's an example of sort of what that strategy, I can't speak, the strategy and how you've been strategizing um, in year two? Like, what does that look like? Um, So they asked us like the things that we liked doing last year and like what we would like to do again. Um, And then we had like a meeting at the end, like what could we do better? Um, And so... I don't know what the other girl said, but something I said was just like, um, you know, like getting more information before an event or something like that, just because they've never done this before. And, you know, as basketball players, we do get to go to events a lot. So there's just like different areas that we kind of bounce, like I said, bounce ideas off of each other. And we've only had one event so far where we were in person. It was like our media day and it was so structured, so organized. And I could just tell that they really took like our feedback or the feedback I gave them. I don't know what the other ones did into consideration and it was an awesome and smooth experience so huh that's fascinating so you had like a media day during the off season because obviously there's a there's a media day for your teams but the league set up a media day for the program so what was that like yeah so there's two separate days where half the um, PMA people were on one day and the other half were on the other day. We got our hair and makeup done. We were in this really cool space and we did um, different interviews. We did different holiday things. So we got all of that done for the year. Uh, photo shoots individually and with each other. Uh, just getting like a bunch of, not generic, but like a broad, th- um, like wide range of things so they could keep pumping out like content throughout the off season. Right, right. I appreciate that. And and before we, we move on to talk about 
my favorite protein bar, Built Bar. I did want to ask you um, about any philanthropic events. I mean, I know you spoke about how, you know, the events are sort of starting to pick up and that will sort of um, continue to happen, I guess, you know, through the new year. But I was at an event yesterday where Dee Dee Richards was shopping with these these young basketball players. And um, it was so fun to watch Dee Dee shop for them and for herself. And so I'm curious what types of, you know, community events you either have experienced in the past uh, in 2021 or the ones that you're maybe looking forward to and sort of what type of event you'd love to be a part of when it comes to community engagement. So I'm doing something similar that Didi did, um, which I'm really excited about. I love working with kids and I work with this charity back in St. Louis where I'm from. It's called Eagles Wings and they basically create an experience where um, they provide all brand new clothes, a lot of it name brand, and they go to underserved kids and they get to go like shopping. So they get to pick out, you know, like two shirts, two pants, a coat, you know, depending on the season, things like that. And it's like an experience that some of them don't get because um, of their situation. And so it's always really fun to do. And so we worked with that charity and on Monday, we too are going shopping through Dick's. So uh, we're doing like a little dinner and then we get to take them to Dick's and we're going to go shopping. So I'm excited. Oh, that's brilliant. I love yeah. that they, that Dix was able to sort of connect it to a program that you're already affiliated yeah. with and mm -hmm. you've, you've made connections with these people. So mm -hmm. that's, Oh man, that's cool. Well, <laughs> I love that. And what I also love is I love Built Bar because I will tell you all something else about me. I can't go more than, I don't know, four hours without food. I just can't. Maybe I call it getting a little hangry or maybe I'm a hypoglycemic. Who knows? But I can't do this coverage, like talk to Fee, without being well-nourished. And that's why Built Bar is really quite brilliant. White chocolate peppermint granola. Uh, it's Built's take on the granola bar. It's so much more filling and it's insanely tasty. And then there's candy cane brownie. I'm obsessed with candy canes, so I love that one too. There are the puffs, which are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. And so for anyone who hasn't tried Built Bars before, they're literally the best tasting protein bars ever built. Yes, baboom, that play on words there. So they are revolutionizing nutrition as we know it with 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and shockingly low sugar and calories. I believe it's only 130. So if you are on the go like me and you are trying to cover some of the best athletes in the world and are known to get a little hangry, which, listen, it's not a bad thing. People are just built differently. Um, so you ought to try a Built Bar. Get 15% off your order right now by using the code LOCKEDON15 at built.com and tell them that Grandma Myrna, the mother of our very our own Howard Megdahl, sent you. Okay, and we are back. So with the, the third and, and final part of this, I think what I want to center this around is this idea of Meliora. And let me explain what that is. And you were sort of alluding to this before in that you filled out a survey at the end of 2021 to sort of inform the league and all of the staffers working on this to try to figure out, okay, how do we make this better? So when I say Meliora, I'm, you know, being a nerd and using Latin to say, how do we make this even, even better than how it's been made in, in 2022? And so I'm curious what your thoughts are there. And then I've, uh, there was a bit on the Cheryl Reeve show that I'm going to bring up. I know you know that podcast well. Um, one of the best women's basketball podcasts out there besides ours, of course. Um. <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Um, I think you could get better. Maybe, you know, the, the whole point of the PMA is so that players don't have to go overseas. 
And so for that to happen, we have to have more people in the program. And for that to happen, we have to have more money. So, um, you know, getting more money for the league, for the players, for the PMA, and then getting more people here. So it actually is, you know, it's been awesome for us, but we're such a small number of percentage of people in the league. Last year was three. What percentage is that? This year it's 10, you know? Mm. So um, I think that could get better. And then I think they are doing a great job of like, boosting out content and I don't know how the media people do that like always creating new content things I'm sure that could get better I have no idea how to make that <laughs> but um, it's like I said we already are going to so many events um, so I think that's so fun but the more people we get involved I think the better for sure and, and so something that Cheryl actually actually reminded me about on her podcast the Cheryl Reeve show with Jim Suhan, which I'm sure you've been a, a guest on multiple times. Um, they were talking about this idea of how important it is for WNBA players to, I guess, experience things at playing speed. I mean, I know part of the idea here is that you guys are training and you're getting into shape and you're doing skill development while going to different events. And the way the program is formatted, it allows you to do that. It allows you to continue to improve as basketball players. But I guess what I'm really curious about is how do you make sure that you are getting as close to playing speed without actual games to, to prep for that April training camp? Um, yeah, live, live action is like the best you can do. So trying to play three on three, four on four, five on five, if you have enough people, uh, sorry, it's okay. finding enough people for that in the off season is usually with, the, um, you know, with the challenges, but definitely playing pickup as much as you can. And like me, I'm doing marketing with Minnesota. So I go there a lot. And so, um, we have a lot of pr practice players, luckily, that I can play pickup with. And Rachel Bannon lives there, so I have someone to always play with. But it's really hard in the off season. We don't have like, you know, we don't have a G League. We don't have a lot of people are overseas, so it's hard to find, you know, really good people to play against. But if you can do it, that's I would definitely suggest that. I guess it this sort of dovetails with what you were talking about, which is the idea of when the program grows so that there are even more people stateside, then you have more people that can play together. Um, and there can be really innovative ways to, I guess, put on maybe exhibition games. I don't know. We're just sort of brainstorming this into the yeah. world of podcasting. I mean, um, the men in the off season, they have runs all the time. And you see yeah, that yeah. also, like that's broadcasted. Like they're continuously pushing out content as well. Like people love watching those runs. It's, the highlights are always on boardroom and, you know, overtime and all these different platforms. We could be doing the same thing. Ah, oh, I, I think maybe I've helped you come up with what to put on the survey this time around. I love that. Um, but you know, I also, it's interesting though, because there's obviously a, a talk about keeping you guys safe in the United States and also just keeping you healthy. Um, because we see when people go over or players go overseas, there are, there are injuries, but also I think there was a case where, you know, maybe players weren't doing enough live runs and then they would get injured in training camp. So it's about, I guess finding a balance and, and I guess what I want to know from you is how, what is the journey to finding that balance feel like? Like how have you found what is working for you? Mm -hmm. um, I'm still finding that, you know, the past couple of years, I haven't been to training camp since I was a rookie, like a full training camp, first of all. So last year I was pregnant the year before I um, was in France, the year before it was COVID. So like everything was weird. Uh, so I'm still finding, I guess this year I'm going to find out what that balance is. And that's the difficulty with being a professional. You don't have, you're not in college anymore where, you know, it's a progression and you're there forever and they have you come back in the summer. And so I'm going to have to find what works for me this year. So I guess we'll see. For sure. For sure. Well, um, that is our show. And Nafisa, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for making Locked on Women's Basketball your first listen every day and uh, make sure you join us tomorrow where I will be with another WNBA player 
who is a part of the Player Marketing Agreement Program. Spoiler alert, we mentioned her name already, so that's a big hint there. But for your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day that's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. I am Jackie Powell. I've been alongside Nafisa Collier and Mila. It's been a wonderful conversation on Thursday. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your afternoon.